So ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve for My Audio Stuff, and on top of doing a father's devotions, I also have a lot of audio equipment. So I figured, you know, why don't I start to showcase some of this? So uh, this is my favorite receiver. I'd like to show this one to you today. This is the Harman Kardon 930, and I'll close up on it here, twin power receiver from about, gosh, I think 1971. I think that's when they started producing these up through, and I might be pushing this, probably somebody will correct me here, up to maybe early 1975, late 1974. This is one from the end of the production. So this is probably a 74, early 75 model, right before it was discontinued. But at the time, for, you know, three, four years, this was Harman Kardon's flagship two-channel receiver. Obviously, they made four-channel receivers as well, but this was the top of the line two-channel receiver for Harman Kardon. And as I stated earlier, this is a twin-powered receiver. And what that means is that this thing has a separate power transformer, separate set of capacitors, separate rectifiers for each of the two channels, which means that though it's somewhat of a small receiver, maybe, I don't know, yeah, maybe 15 inches long. I, I, I suppose I, I should measure this. Maybe it's 16 inches, 17 inches. But it's not a really big receiver, but it's a heavy receiver, primarily because of the power supplies in this thing. And because each channel has its own power supply, it's extremely dynamic. This is conservatively rated at about 50 watts per channel, but it'll, it'll, it'll handle momentarily momentary uh, boosts uh, dynamics probably up to about 90 watts per channel. Well, this is a very, very potent receiver. It's not a receiver uh, to take lightly. Because of its dual power capabilities, two separate power supplies, you can play any music material you want on it. Uh, high high uh, dynamic range CDs, percussion, bass, you name it. This is the kind of receiver that your son and his friends, when they come home from college, make fun of. But then when they play it, they're humbled by it, and they discover that it blows all of their other garbage out of the ground. That's the kind of receiver this is. Uh, this was Harman Kardon's attempt to basically take the best of their separates at the time and put them into one receiver. And because of that, there is no area in this receiver that is weak. Uh, this has a top-notch uh, preamp section. Uh, probably gives you a frequency range of around 5 hertz up to maybe 140,000 hertz. So it's extremely fast, extremely responsive. The FM tuner section features a tuner that is 1.8, 1.7 microvolts of sensitivity, which means, practically speaking, you can pull in weak stations and get decent stereo reception out of it. Uh, also, this has an excellent phono section on it as well. It's just a four-transistor phono section. But the way Harman Kardon designed it, it's extremely dynamic, extremely responsive. I can show you some of the controls for this particular receiver. Two speakers, two tape decks, high and low filter there. You can see loudness contour, except Harman Kardon called it just contour and then a tone defeat. Very simplistic on the controls, bass, treble, balance, volume. And then, of course, something that was very common during the time, that's the mode switch. A lot of different stereos had these for stereo reverse stereo, mono left and right, you know, that is both channels combined in mono, and then mono left and mono right, and then look over here at the function selector. Look at the inputs this has. So you have two auxiliaries, FM, AM, and two phonos on top of the fact that this thing also has two separate tape decks. So you can hook really just a plethora of devices up to this uh, and still have more left over. Uh, the other thing, too, I like about this receiver is that it's all discrete circuitry in the audio paths. That means that they don't use any integrated circuitry. Not that that's always a bad thing. Obviously, we have better integrated circuits, op-amp circuits, preamp uh, integrated circuits today than they had back at this time. But still, this is a very dynamic sounding receiver. I got this thing off of eBay for, I think, 350 bucks. I probably overpaid for it. Then again, uh, this was 
for the most part, a mint receiver. I think somebody bought this um, and just put it on their shelf in the back of their closet, and it sat for 48 years. You can see that it still has the original uh, bluish uh, wrap on the aluminum, and I have uh, just kept it there. I haven't pulled it off. <laughs> so this thing uh, still has some of the packaging material on it, and I, I just left it there. Um, I did do a capacitor refresh inside this thing. I put all new electrolytic capacitors. I think I used Panasonic's. And then I replaced all the capacitors in the phono section and in the uh, receiver preamp section, uh, receiver amp section with Elna Silmic 2's, which I consider probably some of the best audio grade capacitors you can get. Not that this thing really needed any of that, but I figured after 48 years, it's probably best to do that. Uh, I also replaced the output transistors on this thing. Uh, conservatively, this is rated at, a, as I told you, 50, 55 watts per channel. Uh, the transistors are wired in quasi-complementary fashion, so it's not NPN, PNP, which uh, I think at this time was very common. I think quasi-complementary, you can uh, correct me, but I think they're a little better on switching distortion because you're, you're one, the... Uh, top of, of one wave then goes to the top of the other wave and it's in the same type of transistor which is NPN as opposed to going into odd transistors NPN PNP so I think this has a little better uh, or lower switching distortion um, but I went ahead and replaced the, the transistors which are rated at 125 watts dissipation with 250 watt transistors that doesn't mean this puts out 250 watts but it does mean that the transistors will have more headroom for them, which probably uh, is a better thing, being that this thing has two separate power supplies in it. So this thing probably conservatively puts out now close to 100 watts per channel, maybe 80 or 90 watts per channel, because it has transistors that are more equal to the power supply uh, of this unit. I also... Um, uh, set the idle voltage or, or reset the idle voltage and all of that on them. But this is another one of those uh, particular receivers that will humble people. Uh, but it's very simple. Uh, the other thing I also like about this, now watch this, is say you want to play a record. So if I go to like Phono, it shuts the lights off for the tuner. And then it just illuminates, you know, the Phono. You know, Phono 1, Phono 2... If I go to auxiliary, auxiliary two, auxiliary one. So I really like this. Everything quiets down and it's just a very simple, very direct uh, receiver. Once again, this is very excellent. I did do another modification with this thing really quick. The phono section on this, it's a little phono board. It's underneath the unit. So you have to turn it upside down and take the bottom panel out. It's a four transistor phono board. Uh, some of the Marantz's, actually the majority of the Marantz's at, at this time were six transistor boards. Not sure why Harman Kardon did this. Probably just fewer boost stages, better audio. It's an excellent phono section, but I went ahead and took uh, the uh, transistors out and I replaced them with, and I know probably some of, some of you who listen to this aren't going to like this, with NTE-199s. And these are high gain preamplifier transistors were probably developed in the 60s and then further perfected in the 70s but these give the phono section how can i say this more bite to it that's about as best as i can describe it and i love the sound but those those are the modifications that i have made to this again uh, this is really a mint and fully refurbished i also aligned the fm front end very easy to do but uh, this is a fully refurbished Harman Kardon 930 twin power receiver from 1971 to uh, late 74, early 75. And this is probably one of the final releases of this receivers. Again, um, of, of this receiver. If you have any comments, you can leave them uh, below. Uh, I also host, for those of you who don't know, a Father's Devotions. And I think I have a link for that. That's my other YouTube site, and it's on Rumble as well as, as this one is. But uh, really quick, <laughs> even though I love audio stuff, right, you can't take this with you. 
but what you do take with you is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to learn more about him, you can email me or just go to my other site. I have a link for it, a Father's Devotions. God bless you.